you know, benefit one of fasting is, is that yes, it's hard and you're training yourself to do hard stuff. That's who you are. You're reminding yourself when you're saying no in those three days to, I'm not eating that. I'm choosing not to eat that. I'm choosing not to eat that. I'm choosing not to eat that. It's hard, but you're reminding yourself that you like to do hard stuff. Cheeseburgers. Ten thousand. The opposite. So that would <laughs> that would be no, not too much. Um, I just did cross, dude. <laughs> I just saw someone do uh, a thousand, a thousand miles in a year. He ran in a thousand miles in a year. Oh, wow. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a lot of miles. Yeah, yeah pretty cool. That's a cool goal. I just, dude, I just, I just hate what running does to like the body. Like the only reason I would do that is probably for the reason that he did. All mental. All mental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like knowing that like, oh God, I, know. God, I gotta do it today. Like, gotta, you know, and he, he showed his, his progress and like some months, you know, he only got like 66 and I'm up, he got like 140 or you know, whatever. And you know, he made up for it. But it's like, you know, I wonder what was going on in his head those months that he was only getting 66. Like, I wonder if he was, you know, he planned on that. Like those are just his busy months or like if he just randomly got busy or, you know, whatever happened. But I wonder if there was like, you know, I, I imagine on that journey, you're, you're, you're kind of like, shit like yeah. i'm here and like okay i'm doing good and like it's just it has that pressure and that tension but then you get to the end of it and it's like you feel so much better about yourself because you're like i freaking did it yeah i did despite to the fact that this happened he did 2020 so a world shut so i don't know i mean maybe that made it easier on him i don't know i think that, i think he's a lawyer but he yeah 2020 he planned to start 2020 and then the rona came out and you know and took everybody by surprise and so made it happen. But it's kind of what I wanted to, I guess, talk about a little bit. Um, so I just did a three day fast. And yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. Well, technically, so it was technically it was 68 hours because I didn't like, and I'm gonna get to it right now. I didn't go all the way until dinner time. Long story short, um, a dinner time on the third day. Long story short, I didn't do that just because. I had gotten out of the fast what I wanted. Now you can go on the internet and you can find all these things that are like, oh, you apoptosis and autophagy and, and it, it cleans out your cells and boosts your testosterone, like all this stuff when you do like prolonged fasting. Mm -hmm. If you look into like real science and like studies of it, not much of that shows. Um, it's one of those things to where it's like, you know, it, it's, like intermittent fasting, if you will. Um, you know, if you're just doing, you know, 16 hours, not even eight, like if you feel better doing it, then just do it, you know, but it's, it's the data does not point to like, it's some like magical solution. Like cold plunges. Right. Yeah. But again, it's one of those things that you feel better doing it, do it. Okay. So if, if all the science does not really necessarily support, you know, all of these benefits that by the way, the reason it shows these benefits, the, it does show like, you know, you, you do have, um, autophagy, which if you don't know what that is, I might butcher this a little bit because I always get the two kind of confused, autophagy and apoptosis, is essentially cell death. Like the cells are dying and building, you know, new cells. I forget it. That's that's layman's terms that like I eat, like that's just how I understand it. Um, there's no need for me to go into more depth of it. But anyways, that's essentially what's happening. But that also happens when you diet. So you, you can fast for three days or you can just eat in a calorie deficit for two weeks like it's gonna be the same like realistically like it, you're gonna get like some of the same that's what it sh shows data shows is that that's pretty much what you're gonna get so why did i fast then um because sucks <laughs> like it really does it's you know it's 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 not easy from a just an overall kind of like mental energy perspective uh, especially for someone like me that's like constantly eating mm -hmm. um it's a real mind fuck if you will of like oh wait I'm, I'm not doing this right now and then i was still in the kitchen you know two times a day cooking doing something um for either you or sophia and you know so i still had food right in front of me i know that's when i was like oh man he's he's having to cook food while he's hungry i don't know if i could do that well, but 
you could if you're doing it for the same reason that I am. Because when that was happening, I was like, no, this is exactly this is good. It's exactly what I want from it. Made it, it harder. Yeah, like yeah. I, I want this to be more difficult on me because that's the intent of it. That, you know, I, I started doing fasting because I, you know, internet, you go into these deep dives of the internet and all these, you know, blogs and stuff claiming all this crazy shit. And they're like, oh, you saved your life with your cancer and everything. Um, and that's why I originally started doing it and I got into it. Um, believe it or not, at one point I thought fasting was the way to build muscle. Which is stupid now that I think about it. Um, but that's why I started doing it. And now that I know ah, it's not really that much benefits, I do feel better. I told you yesterday I feel better after doing it. There was I mean, a big difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah, was a right. very big difference. Like from my psyche before and then after? No, with your energy and... Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can say that. Not to say like, oh my gosh, you were completely like <laughs> lagging the last couple of weeks or it's anything grumpy. like that. It's just not necessarily night and day comparison either, but I feel like you were kind of just on this, all right, get up, do this, I have all these things to do, maybe stress about a little bit, and then just like routine, and then you ended up doing the fast, and... I expected to see you moody and really, really tired and like kind of zoned out a little bit and you weren't any of those. So I was pretty surprised and impressed. You were like still doing stuff. Um, I mean, and I, then I know you said that you had a little bit of like a hard time focusing. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, I think when you did eat and then I saw you that night, you were like calm. And then after you went to bed and then you woke up in the morning, you were like energized, tackled this, 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 this. You're cheerier and like had all this energy. It was just really, really bright. And I feel like you've still kind of carried that over. <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't I don't I don't think that is anything from like a miraculous like, oh, it's the benefits of fasting. I don't think it's that. It's it I just feel better about myself. You, you helped me one day. Like, you're, it was another one of those moments where I was like, damn, I love being with you because you know me. <laughs> and I I was about to cape. Like, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, like, I'm having a hard time focusing, so it's going to be harder tomorrow. And, you know, I, I told you that, and you're like, are you going to be okay with yourself? And I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, I would not have been okay with myself, and I'm glad I didn't. Because, yeah, and, that, and that's why, you know, going back to why I didn't go the whole 72 hours, the hardest parts of the fast is dinner like th throughout the day much easier it's not a big deal you know whatever you skip breakfast all the time lunch again you know it's, it's you, you don't skip it all the time but you know it's not a big deal just dinner when it's like the end of the day you're supposed to sit down have dinner and you're just like going to bed thinking about food again you know that's that's when it really hits you and i was like okay i i made it through that second night because that second night is the hardest um, and yeah, and I was like, oh, and, and things came up where I, I, on last minute notice had to pick my daughter up from school. Um, so then, you know, I was like, okay, with that, and then I had a client afterwards, I was like, it's just going to be too difficult. And I don't, and if, if you follow me on Instagram, I follow homies on Instagram, you will uh, have seen that, like, I eat a lot and you're not, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. Like technically, like they say not to, but like, I, I don't. When do you do what you're supposed to do? Yeah, I don't care. It's never, it's never <laughs> affected me. I think this has been like, this is like three day fast. It's probably like my sixth or seventh that I've done. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and every time I just, I go to town. And it's a yearly thing? Yeah, I mean, I didn't do it last year because I started it. And then like, as uh, 24 hours, like into the 24th hour, um, I was gonna skip dinner and then I remember me and Sophia were going around dropping off cookies to the neighbors and then like that's some dinner like my, my heart's racing and stuff. I'm like, what's going on? Like I felt stressed out, dude. And I was like, okay, there's just a lot going on. This this isn't a good time to do it. Like it was it was bad. It wasn't like I was just like, oh I don't feel good. It was like my heart I was feeling all hot. And uh sure enough I had COVID. <laughs> so I was like, oh okay. Yeah. Good thing I didn't stick to it, because uh, that probably would have made it a lot worse. Yeah. Um, Why did you start fasting in the first place all those years ago? Um, well, Sammy, 
Let me, edit. Let me, let me tell you something about my past. Pretty much anything and everything I did up until the age of maybe 27, I guess not anything and everything, but most things were centered around the fact of getting buff. <laughs> like that, that, that was it. Like that, that's what I wanted, build muscle. And now I was like, oh, that's stupid. I remember- Why did you think that fasting would build muscle? I don't know. The internet, <laughs> the internet is a dangerous place filled with so much, you know, different information that you can find on all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even tell you, but I thought that was the thing. Like, you know, I thought that was the thing to help me get there. And maybe it wasn't muscle, maybe it was like six pack, I don't, I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, that that's- Did you see any, anything to, to benefit? What do you mean, like muscle wise? Mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of a six pack, um, but it's, it's just one of those, like, kind of going off topic, but I wish someone would have told me this years ago, that if you want to build muscle, mm -hmm. all you need to do is eat in a slight caloric surplus, get adequate protein. So just shoot for that one gram, just make it simple. There's, you know, variants of that, but shoot for that one gram per pound of body weight and progressive overload. Like that's, that's all you need to do. It is literally that simple. It does get more complicated because, you know, to progressive overload on different things. Like you do need to kind of train like the stabilizer muscles and everything so like you don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but that that is all you need to do to build muscle. And I just was not, I mean, you know me, I'm still kind of like, I'm still working on, I'm not, I'm not structured as much as I would like to be. Yeah. Um, and so I wasn't structured with that either. So I wasn't progressive overloading my workouts because I was doing like a different workout every two or three weeks. So I wasn't progressively overloading the movement. So I'm not taking advantage of my nervous system adapting to it and then being able to progressive overload more. So once my, my nervous system essentially just take a, you know, a bench press, for example, um, I would you know, do bench press, or whatever. I would see results right away. So after two or three weeks, I would switch the movement to a different kind of, Oh, I already see something on the internet. Let me do dumbbells or whatever. And I would switch it and doing that, you, you can still build muscle because you can still progressive overload, but it definitely impedes your ability to like, that's why it's, it's really good to kind of keep your exercises in the same realm, same camp, if you will. Um, they don't need to be exactly the same, but keeping movement similar um, because, you know, for at least like a, like a 12 week cycle, because yeah. um, you, you, your nervous system picks up on that. Like it, it, it's, you know, if you look at like power lifters, a lot of what they do isn't even necessarily like just muscle strength it's it's nervous system adaptation it's it's their nervous system's ability to handle this movement to be able to tighten the things it needs to tighten to contract when it needs to contract all that stuff at the right time at the right moment and that that has more to do with your nervous system i don't want to say more to do i don't know maybe it's equal balance but it has a lot do to do with your nervous system as well do you think that other power lifters do this fast no no oh no power lifters eat a freaking yeah. lot oh yeah did you work out? Do you work out while you fast? I, um, not aggressively. Like I think what I did. I did yoga. I did yoga and like some push-ups and stuff. Okay. Whereas you would do a regular workout, you do weights and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean it depends. Like I'll, I'll it, it, yeah. There's various my workouts, but they're definitely not as intense. No. Um, I mean I my first start fast. I think it was my first three day fast. I was working at Joe's Crab Shack. And I started on Monday and I ended on Wednesday. Wednesday was my Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'd worked, you know, six hours Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, not eating um, around food and like running around. I remember on Wednesday, you know, like in the morning shift, it, it was it was hit or miss. Like it was either going to be busy or not. Yeah. And <laughs> I remember, I remember I went like, I was cool Wednesday at like two o'clock. I was, you know, chilling. I'm like, all right, I'm cool. Like, I'm going gonna, gonna to get off soon. And like, we'll be good. And then we got busy and it was like the end of my fast. And like straight up, my man was like, "You're yellow. <laughs> like you need to eat." And I was like, "No." Same thing like my mom. I was like, "Just eat." No. Like you don't. When you don't. I hear fast, and I think like I've done like one day fast, mm -hmm. and then or like for a good amount of time fast until twelve, and then don't eat again after a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, but my brain wants to automatically think when I hear somebody is still trying to do everyday functions while not eating for that long 
like, oh, that has to be bad for the body kind of thing. I don't know. And I, I feel like, I feel like that's what a common thought would be. And I only say that because if I, if I'm at work doing something or whatever through, um, through an average day and I start saying like, oh, I don't feel good or, you know, whatever the case is, first thing I get asked is, have you eaten today? And I think, I feel like people associate that with, okay, you got your energy so you can go and do these things. And so to like hear somebody go through a fast and then you're still trying to carry out like your everyday tasks. Yeah, but it's, it's to me, it just makes sense that that is stupid. Because we well, we have like all of this is meant for that. That's literally what it's for. And I think I I, I don't know. This isn't science based. Because hunter gatherers didn't have access to food every day. Right. Um, <laughs> I think what that is when people because yeah that happens all the time. Oh, you're tired. You maybe need to eat. Mm -hmm. Two things. One, that tired feeling that you get. I think is you're just not used to it. You're not used to, and, and I don't even like to use this word anymore, but it's, it is what it essentially is, ketosis. You know, it's, it's your body's now breaking down. It's more than just that, you'll, you'll also, you know, break down because you have a certain amount of glycogen stored in your muscles and your liver. Once that runs out, your body starts tapping into your adipose tissue mm -hmm. and then muscle as well. Ideally less muscle, more adipose tissue, yeah. but it'll tap into it. And I think a lot of people just aren't used to that. And that's when they get that tired feeling. Um, and then also I think it's mental too. Like, I mean, it is oh, it's like- 100% Like mental. if someone, if, if we made that. it a habit, instead of being like, oh, did you eat honey? Saying, suck it up. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> you know so I mean? think we right. associate the, um, <laughs> you said um, people just aren't used to it. I think if they have that, that association with, eat it will refuel me great majority yeah, of people a, a great majority of people don't even eat what they should be eating to refuel them you're probably eating something that will more likely make you tired later on in the day and then um i remember that one time where we were i think we were on a hike and i was saying i'm tired and then i said i just need to eat something and then you told me like you had a really big breakfast like we just got here and then you I don't know, maybe it was a mirror. It was some time where we were, I was eating. And then as soon as I finished eating, not even finished with the meal, I was like, oh, I already feel so much better. And you're like, and that's why I know it's mental because tech, technically your body still hasn't had the time to do whatever it's going to do with your food yet. Yeah, even even carbs, I want to say it's like, it's about 12 hours. I think, I think it gets in your bloodstream within like one or two hours, but um, it starts to at least because it has to be broken down. You know, you got to think, it depends on what you eat, obviously but it, it takes a while for things to actually go to where they need to be. Um, and, and then that's a little bonus tip, you know, the whole thing like the anabolic window and stuff, like yeah. it's like, dude, it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal because realistically it still takes a while for like protein too to like go into your bloodstream. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is, and most things are mental. You know, that's, that's something I keep, um, uh, Lane Norton, like people watching, listening, you should check him out. He's a really smart dude. And I listened to two of his like most recent ones, and on both of them, uh, he went on uh, um, he went on the Huberman podcast, and then he was on uh, Ed Ed Milet's podcast. And in both of them, he brings up the power of bias, like it is the 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 power of um, placebo. I'm sorry, it's the power of placebo. It's 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 so incredibly powerful that it, it really is, in my opinion, the thing that makes or breaks whatever it is that you're trying to do. Because it does not matter what's happening to you. Like you see these stories all the time. I saw one on TikTok where this kid got diagnosed with cancer, I want to say like 17, 18 or something, and he thought he was done. And then he, he was like, oh, this guy saved my life. He's, he, he'll listen to something from some motivational speaker. And he was just, you know, pretty much said the same thing that every motivational speaker says is what you think is what's going to happen. And it's my true. Parents really, really. Yeah, but like, you know, and, and, I mean, that's why it's like, I, I love the phrase, do and believe what moves you towards your goal. And if what you're thinking does not do that, don't think it. It doesn't, I mean, it, it really doesn't even matter what it is. It's like, I, what's, where did I first hear this? It was something along the lines of like, uh, Walt, Walt Disney had a quote where it was like, if you believe it, you can achieve it. 
And when I heard the quote, the person that was like speaking upon it, he said that some of you will be like, that's not true. If I said, I believe I can fly, I'm never going to be able to fly. Like that, that's not going to happen for me. But what world do you want to live in? You want to live in a world where you believe that you can go after that thing that you really want to do and just keep going after it. Because you know, that's another thing that you hear from a lot of people, successful people, is that the, the joy is in the pursuit. If you don't love what you're doing, then like, what's the purpose of it? Because the I joy should be- I think also has to do with um, your mentality on, I believe I can fly physically as a human being. No, can't, that can't happen. But if it's something I really want to go after, then I will open my mind to using other tools to allow me to do it kind of thing. Yeah, right. You, you'll figure out other ways, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're on the pursuit of like what you, what it is you really want to do. So it's it's just you know, and I mean this can tie. We could say this you know, New Year's, like like you got goals coming up. Like if you don't believe, one you have to want it. Like you have to truly want it. Whatever you believe it, then it must. And then you believe it. You you believe. And if something is like you know whatever it is for for sake of it. By the way. Um, fasting should never be used as a tool for weight loss. It's stupid. It like for weight loss, it actually sucks because all you're doing is one. I, I mean, this is just, you know, arbitrary numbers. Just I'm assuming. So if the average person burns 2000 calories a day, what happens is when you fast, maybe the first day you burn 2000 calories, the second day you're probably burning like 500 because your body's like, I'm not getting food. I'm slowing everything down. Um, and it's not. And then what happens is you come out of that fast and you know, you're, you're essentially, you know, staying at that lower metabolic state um in to begin with and again that, that's different for everybody it doesn't necessarily happen for me but you know i know other people it happens like like that with is that when they fast a lot it just slows metabolism down so it's terrible for fat loss don't ever do it for fat loss that's 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 an eating disorder um like i said i, I do it just for mental benefits um but yeah it's it's you going back to the you like saying, that your mind is very oh that's hard i'm gonna do it and for me it's i wouldn't exactly just catapult myself into the things that sound hard i'm more of <laughs> this is hard but i can step now that i'm in it i can just i'm good at pushing through mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean oh i'm coming up on i haven't had it's the holiday season and i haven't had any sweets since God, I don't even know when. Before but, Thanksgiving. Yeah, before Thanksgiving. I decided before Thanksgiving, I'm like, I'm not gonna have any sweets because it's the hardest time of the year mm -hmm. to do it. And yeah, and yeah. I think it was my mom that asked me, "This is a terrible time. This is the freaking best time to do it." Because that, that's Teach what it yourself, is. You can say I'm no. not losing. Like, I'm not doing it to lose weight. Like, if I want to lose weight, I can eat cookie every day and still lose weight. It's a matter of like other stuff that I'm eating. Like, and I know, like the I know escapism how to do that. thing. We're attached to our phone screens. We're attached to, oh, my stomach is growling. I have to eat or. There are sweets in front of me. It's the holidays. Like, it's just something that you do. I got to do it. <laughs> it's a great time to say no. It's a great time to test yourself in your power of saying no. Yeah. When it's the hardest time to do it because it carries over. Yeah. And that's, I mean, so, you know, benefit one of fasting is, is that, yes, it's hard. And training your, I'm training myself or whoever wants to eventually partake in it. You're training yourself to do hard stuff. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. You're reminding yourself when you're saying no in those three days to, I'm not eating that. I'm choosing not to eat that. I'm choosing not to eat that. I'm choosing not to eat that. It's hard, but you're reminding yourself that you like to do hard stuff. I feel that's like that's good. Happen. So people do strength training, I would think, to be able to carry out um, your everyday tasks and prevent you from getting hurt in the long run. That's but what I they should like, do it for. But. <laughs> but I feel like with this whole you doing the fasting and you wanting to do it, um, for your mentality and your willpower, it's a more of like you're training your mind because hard shit happens to people every day. You will never be able to stop that. And so if you purposely choose hard things to say no to or to keep composed in, then when life throws all those random hard things at you, then think of like how, how much better you're able to respond and react and get yourself through it yeah so i enjoy hard things that's that's what it is you know what i'm saying like and but again that's you know some people be like that's stupid you don't enjoy hard things yeah i do why because that's what i choose to believe 
<laughs> no, that's, that's what I choose to believe. And you like, are special, though, because it, I feel like there's the people I'm who not. are like, I want to stay comfortable. And then there's the people who because that's what they I believe. think you would say is the opposite, which is, I'm okay with doing hard things. And then there's a difference between, I'm okay with doing hard things. I feel like I manage it well. And then purposely being like, I like hard things. I'm going to do them. <laughs> so two things. Anyone, listening or not, that says, why would I want to do that? That's stupid. That's hard. Mm -hmm. That's your belief. That's your belief. That's stupid. It's Which hard. And it's, it's already stupid. right. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Start changing that. And the second thing is to change that. Yes, of course, you have to rephrase that. You have to mm -hmm. say it differently. And you can't be saying it like outwardly, but also inwardly. It takes time. It took me a long time. And I mean, that's why I like fasting. Like, like there's other ways to do hard stuff. I could say once a year, I'm going to go for, I'm going to run a marathon on a whim. Like there's, there's other way. I'm not saying fasting is end all be all this why I do it. But the reason I do it is, is because for me, it's, it's like, it's, I know there's not that many, but I can get the same benefits. So now it makes it even harder. Cause I, when I first started it, it was like some miraculous, you know, miracle cure. Um, so it makes it harder, but two, it just, it was kind of the thing that really helped. Like that, that was one of the things that was like, when I had to do it, it's what helped me. So now I kind of resonate with it where I'm like, this, this is kind of my thing. Like this, this, I like to do this every year because it's just a reminder that like, I can get through anything. I don't exactly. need some other stuff. You know, I don't need food. You don't need food. The freaking, that actually it's a good reminder that a lot of the stuff that we're told is bullshit. Like, oh, you need to have three meals a day. Oh, you need to, God, even, even like sleep. Like, you know, we're told we need eight hours of sleep. You know like, why? Because food's expensive. Expensive and you have to pay for it and you need eight hours of sleep because that no, means you should invest in a good mattress which is also capitalism i, I don't even think it's capitalism <laughs> like sarcasm, maybe oh uh, like i don't even <laughs> i i really just think that as humans we are designed to seek comfort like mammals in general i i, I can pretty much speak for all mammals how because my dog is sitting over there sleeping all day you know, he's not running around trying to like work out, make his life harder. That's just what we're supposed to do because that's in nature. It's like, oh, we have an opportunity because in thousand years ago, we didn't have, we're like, I'm going to, I'm going to do a fast. Like, they're like, damn it. We're we, not going to eat. Had, <laughs> they had fires and lived in caves wow. that were cold. And, oh, not a thousand you know. years ago, but. No, <laughs> more than that. Yeah. <laughs> but so my, my, my point of it is that like now we, we just have all these opportunities to just like, oh, you know, I can, I can live my life under a blanket if I want. Like literally there's people out there that can never leave the house and just live their life in a blanket in a temperature controlled environment for the rest of their life. They, whatever, they work from home and they just, they, that's it. Which if that's you, more, you know, that's you. That's, that's the life you choose. To if you're happy, if, if you're happy, yeah. Like I have, if, if you're happy with who you are, and all the stuff that I'm saying isn't resonating with you, then like, yeah, dude, great. I wish I was more like, I wish I was like, I'm cool. I'm, I don't want to do that. I want to be comfortable. I don't care. It would make my life a lot easier. But no, for I me. I have a problem with it. Right. Well, that's, that's it. Or, not different. that I don't have a problem with it. Like, I had, I was having a really tough time and you made me take a bath and then I just watched TV while I, like I watched TV while I took a bath and I was like having a hard time then shutting it off. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, like, it's okay. It's okay. Because I was like, no, I still have this to do. I have, um, I have stuff to study. I, I'm just like, I don't have time to do this. And, and it actually, it recharged me a little bit. I have to remind myself that I have to slow down a little bit. But if I were to just come home every day and watch TV, I feel yucky. And mm -hmm. that's just me. Yeah. So. Well, I think a lot of that too, though, is like, that's another skill that I can mean, actually get from fasting. So benefit number two is it's, it's meditative mm -hmm. because it, it forces you, you know, if, if you're going to get all riled up and like, and it's going to happen, like you're, you're going to get tensions are going to rise and you're just going to want to eat. It happened to me, you know, maybe because I, find I peace in like the heart you, well, you have to learn to take a deep breath and no, you know, I, I weirdly, uh, aggressively, say, I don't plan on dying today. I'm not going to die. I know I'm not going to die from not eating for two, three days. You know, you can go like 28 days, whatever. Um, so you just remind myself that like, you know, I'm, I don't plan on dying today and this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's that as well. Same thing, you know, when you're stressing about other stuff, it's the same thing. You know, you have to, it's, it's a, it's a skill that you acquire by telling yourself you're going to acquire that skill of like, I know this isn't going to break me. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to die and I'm going to keep going on. Um, 
and yeah, we get to add benefit number two is that fasting is essentially that, you know, um, probably like maybe like throughout the three day fast and it happens five or six times, you're like, hey, I could just eat right now. <laughs> what, so what part of your fast is the hardest? You said se like the second night? Second night. What, do, what exactly do you feel in that time? Empty. <laughs> you feel empty and like really weird going to bed again without food like the first night it i mean it it does feel weird but the second night it's really like yeah there we are again like that feels really weird and even like, there was one time where i tried to do a you know i wanted to do a four day fast mm -hmm. so you know whatever um 72 so 76, uh, 96 96 hour fast is what i was shooting for and i literally woke up after 80 hours and i was wide awake like I tried going back to sleep. I tried, I took melatonin. Like I, I tried to go back to sleep and I wasn't having, mm. my body was like, motherfucker, you get up and you get food now. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like I think I'd work the next day. So I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm okay. Like, That's 80, okay, so what's the longest you've gone? 80. 80? And honestly, dude, I could, I could go longer. I, I for sure could go longer. I just, it, it's the sleep thing. Like that's when it's the hardest for me to sleep. Because, like, it totally screws up your sleep. Like, for those three nights, at least for me. And maybe I need to stop telling myself that. But I, I, I wake up. And when I wake up, you know, and, and as the nights go on, um, I've seen, because it's that one time that I went that third night, it, the, the wake up is more aggressive. Like, you, you know, first night, you kind of wake up and you're like, you're alert. It's like, okay, I can go back to sleep. Second night, you're like, oh, shit. Like, you're more alert. And that third night, I was almost, like, ready to go. I might as well, like, some might as well just give you a shot of adrenaline. Like, <laughs> you go out and hunt, sir. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, yeah. Um, benefit number three, I guess, would be, you know, the time savings benefit. You don't realize, like, how much time, especially when you're, for me, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen um, cooking and cleaning. Uh, for me, you, Sophia. Um, and it does take up a, a good chunk of my day. You know, I would say probably averages like two hours. It's not a lot of time per day that I could be spending elsewhere. And I mean, mind you, I'm still, you know, doing stuff for you and Sophia. So like that part wasn't essentially, I was still doing dishes every day. It wasn't necessarily taken out. But even just the fact of me not eating definitely saved time. So it definitely saves time. But if you're, you know, you're single, whatever, no kids, like, too, you could just work. And you're so focused when you do it, too. Like, if you, you get past, because I, I still had coffee and stuff, and you get past those, you know, little dips and grudges in energy and focus. It's like, no, like, you you get good focus. And I honestly think when I told you I was losing focus, um, I think I was just bullshitting myself. I honestly just think I was like, You just oh. really thought you were like, should I hate? It was just a weak point. Like, I was on, like, TikTok or something. And, like, yeah, I mean, I've been on TikTok more because we've been posting on TikTok more, so I use it as, like, an excuse. Like, oh, I need to go on. I'm like, how do you freaking go on? Like, and, and I'm like, TikTok's great. Like, it's so funny and there's so much good stuff on it. But like, it's a time waste. Like, it, it's, it sucks your life away. So if you're on it, like, for, you know, even if you're on it for, say, 30 minutes a day, oh, that's not bad. That's okay. Yeah, like, it, it that's okay. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, it, it, you may say that, yes, that 30 minutes isn't that much, but it is. It's, what is that? Two and a half hours a week? Two and a half hours a week? That's 10 hours a month? that's 120 hours a year, that's three full working weeks for your 30 minutes a day. Three full working weeks, three 40 hour weeks. What's your time worth? And let's say whatever, you're making $30 an hour. Okay, so three full working weeks, $30 an hour. What is that? I mean, I would, I would have to use a math, I would calculate it for that, but that's $1,200 a week. So that's $3,600 you're essentially losing by going on TikTok for 30 minutes a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when you look at it that way, it, it is, it's, it's, it's a waste of time. And it's the same thing, you know, so the reason I'm using that, I kind of went off on tangent is, but food too. Food's kind of essential, you need it. And I prefer to eat like healthier food. That's another thing, you know, like, you, you don't necessarily even need to eat healthier food. Like there's there's a lot of dissonance and, and whatnot into like, you know, what you should eat and whatnot. And do you really need to eat these healthful organic foods or is it really just about calories and all this? And there's, you know, there's a lot of conflict there. Me personally, I do believe that like calories in, calories out is the biggest thing that matters. You should spend some time in a calorie deficit, it's better for you, yada, yada, all this stuff. But for me, I just feel better when I eat like paleo-esque. I would never be like, you need to be paleo, like everyone. 
But for me, like, and I, I'd say paleo-esque, honestly, it's whole food-esque. Like, cause I still have rice. I don't think they have potatoes, beans. I don't think they have beans. And like, I'll still eat all that stuff. But when I'm, when I'm staying away from like processed foods, um, I just, I just feel better. So it's, it's. You do a good job of that. What's that? You do a good job of that. Yeah, pretty good job. But uh, yeah, you just get used to it. It's just another skill. You know, you just remind yourself, you know, once you do it enough, it's like, that was a step and like, it compounds and I start eating more. I try, more. I try. I've gotten a lot better at it. <laughs> Where I'm like, I really don't need this, or what? It's gonna make me happy for like a few seconds. I'm gonna inhale it, and then I'm gonna feel bad even longer for having had it because now it's not even doing anything for me. So why did you have the hot chocolate yesterday? You sent me the word without any breakfast. I you, know. we, it was planned. <laughs> I know. I know. It was planned. We were like, oh, you tell me. The I think I was in this. It's the holiday space. The only work half day. Fuck the holiday. Sorry, I'm, I'm good. Holidays are great. I just, I don't know. I, 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 I have issues. <laughs> like, I, Disclaimer. Realistically, like, I just have, like, some, some issues in my head that, like, I've literally, like, there's been things that I've done even to, like, my daughter that, like, I have to really check myself, like, and I have to go, oh, okay, like, yeah, I can't say stuff like that to her. Like, one of my favorite things that I say is everything is my fault, and that like, gives me a sense of like, okay, so this is my fault. I have control over it. And she's heard me say that. And she said it about herself. Like, no, 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 no. Like there's, there's varying levels of like what people Did can you tell her stuff. what you meant by that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Countless times. Cause she'll, she'll still say it. She'll still say, yeah, but it's my fault. You say everything's my fault. Like everything's fault. And I'm like. Did you tell her and then <clears throat> check afterwards to see if she really understood what you meant or if she just Oh, she you. knows. Cause I've told her <laughs> multiple times. I think sometimes she just does it now because she knows she can kind of like get me, if you will. You know, she, you know, like gets like empathy from me. Like, no baby, you get attention type of thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely, I definitely have issues. But I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like these issues, I think they help me, you know, like they do. Like they, they these crazy, like to where a lot of people will be like, why do, you, why do you gotta be like that? Like, well, cause I fucking want to be like that because He's it helps me move. You've eaten a lot less processed food than the majority of people, and that's already going to help you. No, well, not even not even that. You know, there's still a lot of things that I I need to accomplish in my life that I want to accomplish, and I'm not in the best place right now. But when I stop and think of where I was six years ago, a year ago, like ev every everything since I pretty much started like working on myself at the age of 24, um, I've progressively gotten better. And I think a lot of that is because of this, the mindset, mindset beliefs, if you will, that I've picked up from, mm -hmm. from influential people in my life, uh, people from podcasts and stuff. And you know, and again, it's one of those things that like, I just ask myself, like, is this serving me? Is this thought process serving me? If it's not, then I need to work to get rid of it. And I, you know, you have to learn compassion for yourself and you have to learn how to be gentle with yourself at the same time. Um, because even if it is, you know, everything's my fault and I do something, I mess something yeah. up. I have to, you have to learn not to dwell on it. Like you yeah. can't beat yourself up because then it's, it's, it's not effective. Um, so it's all skills that you learn, but it's, it's all deciding to go on this, this, path of you know issues like i said i think is helpful like realistically and and it, it just fits my demeanor too like i've yeah. i'm more of a person that you know i've said this to you and you're probably annoyed by it by now but i just ripped the freaking bandaid off like if something needs to be done why are we still more times it? often than not where yeah i could stand to just rip the bandaid off otherwise i'm prolonging my own torture mm. and there are other times where it's annoying yeah <laughs> yeah um so, but you're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> consistent with some things, less consistent in others. And it, it's all, it's all work and I'll get slowly better at it. And, you know, and again, like I said, I have to have compassion for myself and not beat myself up. But at the end of the day, it's in my control. So yeah, I just I have to, I have to work on it. And these little things like these fasts and, and that these things that you're doing from what you sounded like in the past are things that you're doing solely for you not what others think of you yeah oh yeah they're 100 for me that's another one of my big phrases is uh 
what you think about yourself when you're by yourself is what matters. So it's, it's not like, you know, that's why this fast was important that I didn't break the second day because then that would have just stuck with me in my head. Yeah, you would, I know you would have beat yourself yeah. up about it for a while. Yeah, I don't know if beat up, that's, that's, I mean, you're right. I don't think I would have dwelled on it, as I just said, but it, it would have popped in my head multiple times and that just wouldn't have been good. I would have heard it a good couple of times. <laughs> so really, I was only thinking of myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the fourth benefit, I guess, of, of, of fasting would be, it's a reminder that you're in control. Like you, you are in control of everything in your world. Our brain sits in a dark space inside our head and never sees the world around us. It's all its own interpretation of the world. It's all how we perceive it and how we put it together mm -hmm. and doing this fast and when you have people telling you you should eat, and it's okay to eat, you need to eat, right? You need to eat for energy. And you, thank you. You look at them and say, thank you. I appreciate your perspective and your opinion. But your thoughts are what matters. Not other people's thoughts, mm -hmm. not what they think you should do, what you think you should do. And that is why I love it, because it's, it's a reminder. Drop on your thoughts. It's a reminder that you're in control. You you got this. You you see something needs to get done your brain's gonna hit you with no oh, come on you feel so much better if you eat no you'll feel better now you'll feel better today but a week later you're gonna feel worse a month later you're gonna feel worse and once you start understanding that you just keep doing the hard stuff and it compounds all it really does yeah it's my newest thing that i'm i'm I, I screwed up today i gave myself some grace because we went out and, you know went out and had a few beers we're out to what like Oh, yeah, like 10, 10, which is late for us. Um, but my newest thing is uh, um, if, if I wake up after four, you know, usually I'll, I'll wake up and I'm usually like awake, but I'll get back in bed and I'll start reading. I'll justify it. It's like, oh, I'm starting my day. I'm reading. But I notice when I do that, nine out of 10 times, I go back to sleep. And the next thing I know, it's like six o'clock. And to me, you know, I feel like six o'clock, that's, it's a lot of my day like that that's two hours gone and that's like two hours that like you're you're just still in bed so you sleeping like that's my time to do whatever it is that i want to do so i love having that time so that's my new thing after four i'm getting up um yeah because that 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 is what i believe will move me closer to my goals and you know some people be like oh that doesn't work for me i like to sleep in i need more sleep okay fine well <laughs> but that's a choice that you believe as well you could be right i don't know